Hello everybody, my name is Vince Smith and with a team of colleagues as part of some work we've been doing for DISCO, the Distributed System of Scientific Collections, we've been trying to develop a method to visualise and align the activities of major biodiversity informatics initiatives. And this is something that a number of people have tried to do over the years and it's quite a challenging um, thing to do. People have approached this by looking at things like project interactions, looking at co-authorship patterns, or maybe trying to kind of crudely classify um, uh, various um, initiatives and infrastructures that have been working in this space. But these visualizations are often very hard to interpret and um, they uh, uh, you certainly can use them in a practical sense when it comes to kind of planning things like major investments. And it's quite important because we live in an enormously crowded set of space when it comes to the various projects and initiatives that are happening globally. There are more than 600 initiatives listed on the old Tadwig website. It's an extraordinary dynamic list that's constantly changing. It operates at different scales from local to national to global. And if you're a funder trying to make decisions about where to invest or why to invest, or even if you're an infrastructure provider and trying to decide what areas you should be moving into and maybe what areas you should be leaving, then some form of tool to help you make those decisions would be extremely useful. And um, uh, this working group that was set up um, within DISCO to look at this was had this aim, the ultimate aim of building a simplified visualization. So something that was really intuitive that would show the niche of each infrastructure. And we were inspired by this visualization that was published in a recent paper, which looked at the various different data types and also the different phases of life cycle with data and tried to map onto that the actions of various um, uh, infrastructure organizations. So iNaturalist, Catalog of Life, GBIF, et cetera, within this, um, uh, this um, uh, complex space. So within this team, the first thing we did was really try to figure out well, what were the dimensions that we wanted to measure. And one important characteristic that came from the outset was we wanted to know not just what people are doing now, but where people want to be in terms of the development of their infrastructure. So what are their long term strategic ambitions? We also wanted to look at the different categories of activity that broadly encompass this space. So things like data, standards, software, hardware, and policy. There's obviously many different types of data that we handle, and broadly we've listed those there. So things like specimens, taxonomies, trait data. There are different phases of activity, so things we do with that data. So the creation of data, aggregation, access, etc. And also we needed to measure the relative technological maturity of activities in this space. And that ranges from essentially no activity at all, right the way up to what we call performance and predominance, where people are very busy and active in those areas. So we end up with this quite complex, multi-dimensional space to try and visualize. What we did is we put together some standardized definitions for these terms, wrote a frequently asked questions document, and then circulated that to 10 major infrastructures I won't go in now as to why those 10, but it was 10 large ones that were mindful of their proximity in terms of activities to what's going on in DISCO. Uh, and we circulated this sheet alongside the instructions and asked representatives from each of those infrastructures to then score themselves. And we ended up with this really amazing data set, some 6,300 data points for those 10 infrastructures, um, giving a picture not only of what they're doing now, but where they plan to be in the future. Now, the next challenge is, well, what do you do with this information? How do you visualize it? And I have to say, we struggled um, to begin with coming up with some visualizations like this, which are really a very long way from anything that I think would be clear and intuitive, which was our ultimate aim. But these dashboards that we built were useful in terms of hoping uh, helping us to narrow down on determining what questions we wanted to ask of the data. And um, they allowed us to uh, essentially 
reduce some of the complexity of the data by looking at some of the patterns that were there. And I'm going to run through now some of the um, uh, outputs, some of the learnings, if you like, from um, this data set that we've discovered. So one um, fairly straightforward topic to look at is given the breadth of activity for each of these infrastructures, um, are, are they generalist or are they specialists? Some, like say iNaturalist or Biodiversity Heritage Library, uh, they have a very tight focus on a particular activity, a particular data type, for example. Others are really quite broad. So LifeWatch, Hebif, um, for example, um, they have a broad spread of activities and they also plan to maintain that broad spread as well. We could also look at what kinds of data are probably being most intensively worked on both now and again in the future. And that's what's shown in that um, those little word clouds there. So the bigger words, specimens, formal observations, those are the kind of areas that are most worked on at the moment. And then looking towards the ambitions to how those infrastructures are changing. Interestingly, traits, so the phenotypic traits of um, uh, organisms are uh, going to be a much more predominant in the future, at least according to the stated ambitions of those infrastructures. We could also look at things like holes or gaps in the landscape. Um, and two really stood out. So one, it was um, the development of new hardware, although there was some ambiguity in how people were interpreting hardware, which actually means we need to be a bit cautious in terms of that interpretation. But standards was a really big gap. But interestingly, most infrastructures had plans to fill those gaps through their activities with respect to the need for new standards. So that was like reassuring in some ways. And then we can start to look at contacts. So if you break down, <coughs> excuse me, the precise combination of what an infrastructure is doing um, uh, across those different phases and categories of activity, you can count up how those are shared with other infrastructures. And you can see in this sorted list on the left. So this is just for um, activities that we call predominant. And it also excludes hardware because we were a bit nervous about the way that people have defined hardware. Um, but you can see that um, uh, some infrastructures have got uh, a lot of uniqueness, some um, perhaps a bit less so. Um, and we can also see where precisely they're operating under those data, software, standards and policy areas uh, where uh, each of those infrastructures are working now and again into the future. And then our overall aim was some really straightforward visualization that would um, uh, explain what these infrastructures are doing. And that's what we're trying, I think, what we're getting to um, here. So let me just run through this. So this, um, uh, each of these concentric circles represents uh, a different infrastructure. They show the number of different areas of activity that are unique to each infrastructure, where they contact, with whom they contact, um, and also um, how ambitions will change that pattern. So for example, if we take GeoCase, which is a geo or earth science infrastructure, they have five unique areas of activity, three contact LifeWatch, two contact GBIF, 15 um, areas are what they're planning to expand into over time. Six of those would contact LifeWatch, for two of those GBIF. So that might, for example, pose some questions about should GeoCase enter those spaces um, uh, and how are they different? Now, there are a few failures in the methodology. So some standardized definitions probably need to be a bit tighter, particularly those about hardware. Um, there was a degree of over or underestimating the maturity by some of the scorers, and we try to mitigate that by having multiple scorers, but that's a hard thing to do. The visualization um, might not scale to hundreds of infrastructures, and that's something we're currently exploring. It should be bailed in mind, not all contact or overlap with an infrastructure is necessarily bad. <clears throat> um, it's a signal really to investigate further. And in some areas, competition is good, particularly where there's lower levels of maturity. And a statistical approach might be 
useful in terms of some of the visualizations going forward. So what are we doing in terms of next steps? Well, we're refining the visualization. We are publishing this. We've got the first publication almost ready to go now. There's a potential to develop an online self-assessment tool where one could just drop your scores for your infrastructure in and instantly see how you relate to uh, other infrastructures. And I think that would be a really interesting development. And then lastly, a number of organizations have said they wanted to add data. And a few quick acknowledgements lastly, um, obviously all our data providers, it was quite an effort for them to provide that data. Uh, big thanks to Disco for supporting this work and my co-authors. And lastly, uh, but by no means least, Sarah Vincent at the Natural History Museum in London, a data analyst who's helped with some of those visualizations. So thank you very much.